top of the morning bay with Good Morning Bay. Get to know about the traffic on your way and what's news around the world today. Some wisdom skills along the way. Oh, and a song to hum along with and sway. Get your perfect entertaining start to the day. At 9 a.m. every weekday morning with Mahima's, Mahima's Good, Good Morning, morning Bay. bay. हम आ गए हैं आपके प्यारे महिमा के द्वारे मैसेज फालतू बाबा एंड ऑफकोर्स साथ में मेरे हैं फालतू रानी एंड अगर आप सोच रहे हैं वाह वर ए ग्लोरियस डे आउटसाइड इन डीड बन जानी ऐसे लगता है की सूरज की बाहू में अब है ये जिंदगी किरने है सासों में बातों में रोशनी हो माय गॉड दिल चाहता है एक लॉन्ग ड्राइव पे जाओ अभी वेल बट जब कोई सिक्को दी बायो एवरीबॉडी आउट देयर विश यू गाइस नो आई डोंट नो इट्स आई थिंक इट्स ऑब्जर्व डे राइट डे ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन सिक्को दी बायो यस इट्स अ डे आई गेस इट्स अ होल वीक ऑफ सेलिब्रेशंस फॉर सिंको दी बायो एंड ऑफ कोर्स बंजन टू ऑल द अध्यापकस ऑल द टीचर्स आउट देयर थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू बिकॉज़ इट्स टीचर अप्रिसिएशन डे टुडे ऑल राइट एंड इट्स आल्सो गिविंग ट्यूसडे टुडे बंजन यानी कि आप यू नो देयर इज नेवर एनी Uh, good or bad time to give because you're giving, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but today, uh, the um, you know the major companies, PayPal, Facebook, and all these uh, companies are uh, hosting Giving Tuesday to encourage people to give on this particular day. So, if you're looking to give, Banujan, there is a wonderful organization called Pragna that we are also a part of. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, please do think about giving there because uh, Pragna is keeping in this time of uh, physical distancing. Mm-hmm. Pragna is emotionally connecting and socially connecting. That's right, Banujan. None of the um, uh, sessions have stopped at Pragna. In fact, they have uh, morphed into virtual uh, sessions, and mm-hmm. they're. I mean, it's been incredible. Because because uh, we are uh, fostering relationships and we are fostering friendships more than ever before mm-hmm. because you know children who are in isolation have actually um, look forward to these sessions a yeah. lot of the children not only the neurodiverse children not only the children who are uh, developmentally uh, different but mm-hmm. also children who are uh, typically developing their allies mm-hmm. they all look forward to these sessions that happen every weekend so if you want to give please go to pragnya.org or facebook.com forward slash pragnya for autism and then donate over there but then you can donate through facebook facebook actually doesn't charge us a fee uh, when you donate or you can go to paypal giving fund again paypal giving fund and uh, you can actually choose pragnya as a non-profit organization and give from there as well um, many of you have taken on our dance challenge it is still on the step up for a pragnya dance challenge is still going on thank you so much to so many of you adults and children alike who have been posting videos and who have been uh, showing your love and support for autism acceptance thank you so much for those uh, kind videos um so many of you shraddha ji uh, manpreet ji um so many bandhus uh, padma um and nandula and so many bandhus who have been posting on um facebook and uh, keeping this challenge going vanita daniel thank you so much to each and every single one of you mm-hmm. um to abhi altu baba uh, yes. you know what do we have lined up for our bandhus today thoda bata oh, well father ni we have a bunch of things we're going to be doing the uh, traffic update for bandhus and mice uh-huh. right and of course we're going to have a gana kira for us and we have a special guest coming on today and today being the appreciation uh, teacher appreciation day we thought we should actually bring uh, on uh, some information for the bandhus to be held uh, which is going to be help them which is going to help them for sure because we don't know the school closure going on everything and people are actually wondering oh my god what's going to happen you know how is it going to go with the children learning or are they going to learn at all because of some news in the media which says people children also losing out on uh, um, it's called uh, it's called uh, something about learning so it's called something where people the loss of learning they call it so yeah yeah and when the children they actually start uh, dig- uh, regressing 
uh, because this is to happen in summer holidays, I believe. That's what they say. Children who actually are trying to catch up with the uh, academic stuff over so the summer holidays, there's a lack of l- the loss of learning, which is uh, which they say is going to happen at this time also. In, in spite of the fact that they actually are working from home, and many people actually are doing a lot of stuff in terms of trying to get. Uh, um, yeah, you know, kids involved in the education part of it. Parents are getting involved again, but th- still, it is hard. The more we realize how much of an important schools play in the lives of our, uh, you know, um, I should say, uh, life in our lives in, in general, right? Hmm. So uh, right now, Bajan, we're gonna be probably be talking to the superintendent of uh, um, uh, the school board. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Cheryl Jordan with us, who's going to be ta- joining us in a few minutes. But Bajan, we can actually we probably will open up lines for you guys to dial in as well um, she's the superintendent of the Milpitas Unified School District uh, School Board, Banijan, and uh, we are going to be talking to her today to find out some of the measures that are being taken by um, the Milpitas Unified School District to see how exactly they are addressing this uh, school closure situation um, with regard to learning uh, losses in children, how do they address the vulnerable populations, those who don't have access to a technology, uh, even homes, some of them are homeless even. That's true. Um, and uh, special education students. And also, we will be discussing today uh, with uh, Miss Jordan about uh, what about the graduating seniors? What do they have? What are they planned for them? That's uh, true. And so right now, Bajam, what we're going to do is we're going to get into that for sure in a couple of minutes. If you have any questions, you can just message us uh, on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash radio hotties, or what you can do is uh, get onto our stream and send us questions on Facebook directly. Or you also can choose to call us over here. We'll screen the calls for sure, 408 2479 the number to call here if you want to get qu- get your questions to the superintendent of education over here in the Milpitas area, Banjan, Milpitas Unified School District. But right now, Banjan, let's quickly take a look at what's happening in the roads with Alastair Kahal, Total Sustainable. It's time for the Bandu Traffic Update. Call us from wherever you are at 408 912 2479. And as you guys know, the restrictions have been lifted a few few um, types of businesses. That means there's more traffic on the roads. Well, it could be the fact that there's traffic on the roads because of those businesses opening or for the fact that the Cinco de Mayo, right, many people actually uh, will be driving around with flags in this time. Uh, we've not seen that, but of course, I do know there's a lot of noise on the freeways, which I, I started complaining about yesterday itself. In fact, as of my May 3rd, I've been doing it. Uh, but the thing is, um, let's see, there's... Um, Incidents happening on roads already. Uh, moment opens up. There's an accident on 101 northbound south of Embarcadero and Palo Alto Lane, which is affecting um, uh, all the lanes over there. So expect delays on that. And uh, south, we come towards south towards San Jose or towards Sudhir 7. There's not much of traffic around. Construction work happening in different parts of the Bay Area. Watch out for that uh, because they have opened up the construction. Even the road work has not stopped ever since the shelter in place came in. But nevertheless, be watchful of that and drive very carefully. Because the moment everything is opened up, suddenly people People might pour onto those streets is what the fear is, and that's what we got to be careful about. Um, so um, let's do this. Um, uh, Falgwani, huh. we got to go to Ghana Kida right now. That's right. right that's and right. The meanwhile, we're going to get the uh, the superintendent on as well. So stay tuned. Right now, Baljan, we're going to go into Ghana Kida, which I picked for you guys from this movie called Dil Chata Hai. It's a beautiful song, Baljan, and it's the kind of song that uh, is going on in everybody's mind. Dil Chata Hai ki. Parks khul jaye. Dil chata hai ki long drive pe jaye. Dil chata hai schools khul jaye. Bacche wapas chale jaye school pe. Dil chata hai. Kabhi na bite chumki le dil. Dil chata hai. Ham na rahe kabhi yaro ke bin. Din din bhar ho.
Exactly, but you know, ये गाते हुए हम लोग इस ब्यूटिफुल डे को वेलकम कर सकते हैं एंड ऑफ कोर्स एज वी मैं अर्लियर ऑन इन द शो बन जान जैसे यू नो दस अट ऑफ अनसर्टेंटी अबाउट अ लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंट थिंग्स दर आर गोइंग ऑन एनी एवरी वे यू टर्न अराउंड एक लव्स लोगों के लिप्स पे है एंड दैट इज अनप्रीसीडेंटेड अनप्रीसीडेंटेड टाइम्स अनप्रीसीडेंटेड टाइम्स ऑल ओवर द प्लेस सो इन आर सीरीज बिन चैन वे वी ट्राई टू ब्रिंग एज मैनी एक्सपर्ट्स एज पॉसिबल लाइक यू नो वी हैव डॉक्टर सिन्हा टॉकिंग अबाउट कोविड नाइन्टीन अपडेट्स एंड वी आर ऑल्सो लाइनिंग अप लोकल लीडर्स एंड यू नो स्कूल लीडर्स हु आर um you know bringing uh, us updates on uh, what exactly they doing uh, it's incredible amount of work that uh, people are putting in at this particular point in time manjan and uh, since radio t hodis is also based out of mill peters uh, we s- decided to start close uh, to home we decided that we'll go and find out from the mill peters unified school district um uh, as to what exactly they're doing you know we so many parents are worried right now as to you know they have graduating seniors children who are coming into high school as freshmen um there are children who are getting in from preschool to kindergarten and so many different in questions that are going on and children who are possibly going to be um you know uh, it's it's hard to be working from home and also being parents so let's find out from the milpitas unified school district as to ki what are certain things uh, that they are doing to support parents and to ensure that learning goes on right um so who better than the superintendent of the milpitas unified school district um ms cheryl jordan herself to join us and share this uh, information with us on the air um we are very uh, honored and we are very blessed and uh, that she agreed to come on air to talk to our bandhus about this so um let's go on and uh, welcome her um Cheryl good morning thank you so much for joining us today good morning and thank you for having me and i'm the one who feels blessed to be able to have this opportunity to speak to with both of you and our community and i'm ready to go Well, absolutely. So, uh, one of the first things that comes to mind um when we are talking about um the school district. First of all, it's Teachers Appreciation uh, Day. So, uh happy Teacher Appreciation Day to everybody at the Milpitas Unified School District. I know that you were an educator, you're you're an educator yourself. So, um happy uh, Teacher Appreciation Day to you. And thank you for doing what we are doing. Exactly. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. and uh we wanted to kick it off uh, um Cheryl by asking you uh, you know with everything the school closures and covid-19 what what are certain things that uh, milpitas unified school district is doing to address uh, this particular um issue and to ensure that learning uh, is going on for all children all over 
Well, uh, as you said, there is a lot happening. We have 10,300 students approximately and almost 1,000 employees, about a little more than half of those are teachers. Uh And we fortunately started to think and plan for a potential school closures in early March Uh as we um, had students who were coming back from travel and we needed to provide them with independent study. Uh So we quickly launched into something we call MUSD Educate Everywhere, Uh which is our distance learning program. And as you can imagine, it literally is launching something that hadn't been tested, that is currently being developed as we uh, move through each day. And so constantly iterating on what we're doing. Uh And our goal is that by the beginning of next year, um, where we expect that we will still continue to have a need for virtual learning, that our process for doing so is greatly improved. Uh I can say, as you mentioned today, is Teacher Appreciation Day, Uh that I am very grateful and indebted to all of our teachers because without their uh, desire to ensure that learning continues, Uh and quickly plunge into distance learning using Google and Zoom and all uh, other types of applications that would facilitate it, it wouldn't have happened. Hmm. Right, absolutely. Uh, Well, you talked about Educate Everywhere, um, Cheryl, so I'm going to ask you, what about, um, you know, um, situations with uh, students, the vulnerable populations, like, you know, how are you ensuring equity of access um, for students who are homeless or foster youth? Uh, Could you talk to us about that? Yes. Initially, we wanted to make sure that everybody had technology, so that that meant a digital device, Mm -hmm. and we have Chromebooks, Mm -hmm. and Wi-Fi. Within the first four days, we distributed 1,300 Chromebooks, Mm -hmm. and since then, we've distributed uh, probably about 3,000 total in doing exchanges because some of the Chromebooks that we – we just wanted to get them out the door right away so that there wasn't – there wasn't a gap for the students. Mm -hmm. And some of the Chromebooks are what we call legacy Chromebooks, so we had to orchestrate an exchange. Mm -hmm. And also in thinking about future years and even this fall, I'm wanting to ensure that we can uh, reduce uh, chances of transmission. We went ahead and launched a one-to-one in uh, for ninth grade and 10th grade. Uh-huh. So the students all now have a Chromebook that they will keep with them through their years at Milpitas Unified. Uh-huh. We also wanted to make sure that our vulnerable populations uh, still received the breakfast and lunch that they depend on. Uh-huh. And we've served over 100,000 meals to our students in need. And that's not just our students, it's any child uh, up to age 18 who's a resident of Milpitas Mm -hmm. and they can come for meals and those are provided uh, seven days a week Mm -hmm. and we also know that some of our parents now are at the point where they too need support because of missing out on income Mm -hmm. and in working with the county we're to be able to launch some adult meal distribution as well beginning on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And we're in the process of working uh, with Second Harvest Food Bank so that we can also provide grocery distribution uh, twice a month uh, beginning, I think it's Saturday the 13th. Mm -hmm. So we're working to ensure their technology is there and the meal distribution is there. And we do know that some of our families Mm -hmm our residents in the city, that they have difficulty with Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, what this has taught us is that it's very blatantly uh, a need that Wi-Fi connection is a necessity. It's not a luxury. And we have literally gone to people's houses and figured out how we can help them with Wi-Fi in some situations, asking neighbors if they would uh, be kind enough to open a guest account so mm-hmm. that our students living next to them mm-hmm. who don't have Wi-Fi could tap in. 
we've uh, gone to some families who live up in the hills with no Wi-Fi access and figured out a way to get Wi-Fi for them. Wow. And uh, I think it was about March 19th, we ordered hotspots, and at the time we were limited to 49. We're still waiting for those to uh, be delivered, and once they do, we'll take those back to those students where we had to kind of work in some kind of Wi-Fi with them, which isn't the best because it's not high speed, but it was something. Mm -hmm. So I can't say that the work is done. It certainly isn't. There's every day there's something that needs to be addressed, something that needs to be improved. Mm -hmm. Also, our vulnerable populations are especially um, acutely in need, as we all are, mm -hmm. of social emotional support. Mm -hmm. So we have our schooling services coordinator, Nicole Stewart, who is also a social worker, as well as our family liaisons, mm -hmm. connecting with those families and ensuring that they're connected to social services. Hmm. We also have our students uh, with special needs who are very important, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that they are not left out. So we've been working with parents mm -hmm. and with staff members to figure out how we can do distance learning for our students who are actually in more acutely in need of having person-to-person -person support, mm -hmm. and right now it's just not possible, so we're figuring it out through uh, telepathy, mm -hmm. uh, which is using uh, television uh, services, and uh, continuing to work with our families. Mm -hmm. We have several different family groups, parent groups that we meet with, either myself, myself with board members, or um, some of our one of our assistant superintendents hmm. and meeting with the different parent groups regularly and also parent leaders to help provide parent network support. That's wonderful. And of course, Manjana, if you're wondering who we're talking to right now, we're talking to Cheryl Jordan, who actually is superintendent of the Milpitas School District over here with the John Unified School District. And if you have any questions, uh, what you could do is send us a message on our Facebook page. We are we could actually ask the question, uh, you know, of uh, superintendent when she's on air, and you can uh, get the answers. Or or send us a message. We can forward the questions to her as well, and they can respond to you. Um, again, the, the way you can do that is you can go to go to our Facebook page, facebookcom forward slash radio dhotties, and just uh, on the video you can send us a question so we can ask them uh, directly. Uh, but uh, Cheryl had a question about uh, the students who actually are going to be graduating this year. What what happens to those kids? You know, I know some of our uh, people actually were like wondering what's going to happen. And could you share, uh, shed some light as to how it's going to happen? Will there be a graduation ceremony? Uh, how does it go to, how is the new normal going to look like? <laughs> well, you know, that's actually one of the exciting opportunities is we create our destiny. And we are doing that our strategic goal number one in Melpitas Unified is building a culture of we. Mm -hmm. So everything we do, we want to ensure that we are giving opportunities for voice to every aspect of that we. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, the number one is our students. And so in working with a group of stakeholders, mm -hmm. I believe there are about 33 to 35, and they include parents, teachers, and students. Mm -hmm. Principal Francis Rojas has been holding meetings with them about different traditional senior activities that the students are missing out on and how we might be able to not necessarily make up for it, but do something that is in honor of this very important benchmark or passage uh, to adulthood in their lives. And they've decided they do not want a virtual graduation. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to uh, plan for different opportunities to have an in-person graduation, it, depending on what the parameters are set about by the public health officer mm -hmm. and how soon we can start to meet in groups. It could be that we have small groups mm -hmm. of uh, seniors who are graduating uh, at a time. It could be that we have uh, a drive through graduation where mm. we get to have the certificate for the students um, somewhat in person. Mm -hmm. It could be that we wait until a much later date. Uh, I know my colleague in Palo Alto has set a December date for graduation. So we're still working through that and with stakeholder input at the forefront. Okay. For Alternative High School Cal Hills, they are planning, um, because there's only about 
55 graduates, I believe. Okay. They're planning something along the lines of home delivery mm-hmm. and person of certificates. Mm-hmm. And the bottom line is trying to make it something that is memorable for the students so they feel that connection. Makes sense. Right, and absolutely, uh, but Jan, for those of you who are just joining us um, and uh, who are tuning in for the very first time, let's tell you this is uh, Good Morning Bay on Radio D Hotties, and you're listening to um, uh, us talking to uh, Miss Cheryl Jordan, who is the superintendent of the Milpitas Unified School District. And today we are uh, discussing uh, some um, options, uh, some uh, uh, creative innovations uh, that the Milpitas Unified School District. Uh, um, uh, has been uh, trying to put in place to address uh, the, um, uh, you know, distance learning challenges, or for that matter, um, the school closure challenges. And if you have questions, you're more than welcome to send them uh, over our way. Uh, one of the the, the questions that uh, is coming up is uh, the fact that. Uh, with regard to school uh, opening, the governor had mentioned something with regard to school openings being pushed up a little earlier. Is there any information that you have for us, uh, Ms. Jordan, with regard to this right now? I mean, they, he said that schools could possibly open even uh, late July, July or August. So do you have any um, uh, update for us with regard to that, or is that still in the works? Actually, there was an update by the governor himself uh, yesterday, uh-huh. being that uh, the July opening most likely would not occur, and that he is getting input from school leaders across the state. Here in Milpitas, uh-huh. I uh, launched with all of our all of our employees and our leaders on Friday. Uh-huh. Uh, a process for developing at least three different possible paths mm-hmm. to opening in the fall. And we will make sure that we have, again, it's so important to the culture of we, that we have opportunities for stakeholders to give voice to their challenges, successes, mm-hmm. ideas, mm-hmm. their fears, so that we can address these. And the three pathways that we need to think about because – we aren't sure what, um, again, we're not sure what we're going to be able to do as far as coming together in person. Mm -hmm. So we know that there's going to need to be social distancing plan. Mm -hmm. We know there's going to need to be a plan for disinfecting. Mm -hmm. We know there's going to need to be opportunities and regular routines for frequent hand washing and hand sanitizing. Mm -hmm. We also there's going to need to be some way uh, for facial coverings. Mm -hmm. Not sure exactly what that means for students yet. And ultimately, we want to be able to plan for the the chance that we will be able to be in person, but with restrictions. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. That there might be um, funding from the state for us to greatly reduce the numbers of students who are in the classroom to really maximize social distancing. So that could be a variety of different schedules Mm -hmm. and group uh, meetings. That we are prepared for 100% virtual distance learning in case there's a resurgence and we have to go back Mm -hmm. to their own place. And a blending of the two Mm -hmm. where we may have some students who are uh, virtual and some who are meeting in person Mm -hmm. uh, the week. So we need to map out all those different possibilities so that when we know what the reality is, we're ready. Because Mm -hmm. as I told all of our our staff Mm -hmm. in Milpitas, we're about um, charting our own way because we've always been innovators and trailblazers as you um, might note in our vision Mm -hmm. that we are responding and not reacting Mm. that that's uh crucial um and i think um we uh, truly appreciate uh all the work that you've been doing and uh, um you know um 
I, I personally have been a witness to some of the, you know, how you had to quickly turn around in a day, in 24 hours almost, um, how you had to, like, implement the distance learning initiatives as well. So, um, you know, we really appreciate uh, the fact that, um, you know, the Milpitas Unified School District is so proactive and have been uh, taking in uh, feedback and, you know, have been working so closely with so many different parent groups. and. Uh, um, you know, we hope that uh, we would be able to uh, get more updates from you in the future as well. Um, Cheryl, thank you so much for taking the time out today and joining us right here on Good Morning Bay and sharing such valuable information with our listeners. Before you go, is there anything that you wanted to share um, with our bandhus, our listeners who are listening to you, and also uh, parents of uh, students in the families of uh, Milpitas uh, students? Yes, thank you. I uh, I greatly appreciate this opportunity to connect with our families this way. Mm -hmm. I want each of uh, them to know how much we care about them and that we know that this is especially difficult on our parents because our parents are trying to maintain their own work mm -hmm. from a distance and now this is true parent engagement because we are truly partners with our parents in ensuring that the children, our students, are uh, continuing what they're learning. And we know that social emotional needs are high now. Mm -hmm. And please, if there are any people who need support in any way, whether it's academic or social emotional, please do look at our website. It's on our front page, MUSD Educate Everywhere. Mm -hmm. We have a great amount of resources there everywhere from how to protect yourself from COVID for with updates from the public health department to how to have a conversation with your child about uh, your future. Mm -hmm. So please do check our website for many resources and again, Kavita and Kishan and parents know how much we greatly appreciate all of you because each of you is an important member of our team. Absolutely. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that. And of course, Bunajan, the website she's talking about is musd.org. So please do go ahead and visit that website. Um, and to Bandhus who are listening to us from other parts of the Bay Area, if you would like us to connect with uh, local leaders, school leaders in your areas as well, you're more than welcome to write in to us and uh, get in touch with us by going to Radio Dehoris or our Facebook.com forward slash Radio Dehoris. Cheryl, once again, thank you so so much for joining us uh, we know it's a very busy time for you uh, but the fact that you took the time out uh, really means a lot to us so thank you so much uh, we want to uh, again uh, show you our appreciation on behalf of teacher appreciation day and uh, we wanted to uh, request you to please convey it to all the educators in the uh, milpita school district yes, thank please. you so much for joining us i will definitely do that thank you all thank, thank you. you so much and of course, Bunajan, that was Superintendent Cheryl Jordan uh, from the Milpitas Unified School District, uh, who was on the air with us today addressing certain um, areas that uh, are of crucial importance, uh, especially with regard to learning loss, with lega mm -hmm. regards to, um, you know, uh, what kind of programs they have in place, their Educate Everywhere yeah. program. And it, it, it's almost imperative that um, school districts take a proactive approach. Right. Very true, very true. What and uh, what I like about this thing is, of course, uh, not because of the fact that it's Peter School District, they actually have a very good concept of V. Yeah. And we've been, we all have been talking about Bandhus, right? Bandhus is the V concept. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, Alta Baba. Where everybody has an input into it. Right, exactly. And, you know, what is uh, kind of uh, um, disheartening is in some school districts, especially um, uh, in some of the, uh, yesterday I was on a webinar for special education students, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there are many school districts where where uh, parents are actually saying that the school districts are not doing anything. They're wow. not providing <coughs> any any support whatsoever sad, to yeah. parents, yeah. Uh, especially special education parents, um, you know, who uh, whose children are the most in need at this particular point in time. So it's, it's rather uh, disappointing. But if you are somebody uh, who is listening to us, one of our bandhus, uh, and if you are a, a local... Um, uh, you know, political leader for that matter, if you're in uh, government and city government, we will be bringing on different leaders on Good Morning Bay to talk to us about how COVID-19 
2019 is being addressed in That's our community. That's true. And right now, Bajil, if you want to know about the news, just stay tuned. We're going to get into the news segments right now. And uh, if you want to catch up in detail about the news, the only way you got to do it, you got to go to mediamahima.com. Right now, Bajan, this is the news for you guys, uh, which is of course we get for you guys from local uh, uh, agency, which I do say is like Reuters, Reuters, and of course every story we share with you guys on air is available for you guys to read up in detail on our news blog, mediamahima.com, and also on the same blog you'll find more links for you guys to read the decent story in detail. Right now, Bajan, this is the news. So, Banijan, as we mentioned, today is a Cinco de Mayo. So, happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody celebrating. Don't get too drunk. Uh, <laughs> there are a lot of people who have been, uh, you know, apparently uh, loading up on uh, well, alcohol. Uh, uh, pet- the petrol, uh, the police petrol actually has increased uh, to yeah. at least twice, I suppose, because I see more frequently cars nowadays. Yeah. Or at least today. And yes, yes, last night, I was even seeing too many petrol cars Yeah. Uh, on the roads. Yeah. So, watch out, drive very carefully. That's right. So, uh, um, one of the um, uh, other things is, as we mentioned, it is Teachers Appreciation Day. So, um, you know, our gratitude to all the teachers out there. And also, today is Giving Tuesday. Please don't forget to give to Pragna. Um, s- donate, volunteer, uh, brush up on your Mexican history, and thank a teacher. That's what we're telling you to do today. Yeah. Um, also, what else do you need to know to get up to speed? Well, the blame game over the coronavirus pandemic is feeding tensions between the U.S. and China, and that's bad to affect the global economy. Mm. President Trump sent stocks dipping yesterday after he implied he may punish China with more tariffs over its handling of COVID-19. Trump and administration officials, including Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, have also been pushing the theory that the novel coronavirus originated in a Chinese lab. But intelligence just shared amongst uh, US allies says that such an origin story is highly uh, unlikely and the virus probably started in a market as many international leaders and scientists have been saying all along. A senior Office of Director of National Intelligence official said that the U.S. has evidence for both theories. So that remains to be seen. We will bring that for you right here on Good Morning Bay. The White House, in the meanwhile, has issued a memo restricting coronavirus task force members from testifying before Congress Hmm. this month. What? Why? I have no idea. Uh, It also limits the number of witnesses that uh, primary response agencies like the Department of Health and Human Services uh, can provide. The move is allegedly to conserve resources, but House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is slamming it. She says members of Congress who are deciding what to do with the trillions of dollars in coronavirus response money are entitled to learn more about the situation so they can make the best decisions. Among those who have been blocked, guess who are the people who have been blocked? Uh, I don't know. Dr. Anthony Fauci. Really? Is he blocked? Yes. He has been barred from testifying before a House subcommittee this week. Fauci has also been weathering calls for his removal from the White House task force, but says such criticism is, quote, part of the game, unquote. Uh, Tech companies are now going all in on the practice of contact tracing. Apple and Google are working together to develop software that could help people manually track whom they have come in contact with and whether they've been exposed to the coronavirus. The two rival companies shared a series of images and guidelines for governments and also public health authorities to integrate their own uh, integrate with their own contact tracing apps, including how users will be notified if they have been exposed. The UK is also testing a contact tracing app using different technology that will alert users if they've been some near someone who has a b- tested positive for COVID-19. Mm-hmm. In terms of economy, yesterday I shared the news that uh, J. Crew, the clothing company, um, has filed for bankruptcy and it could be the first of the many major retailers to fall victim to the pandemic uh, economy. Uh, stores have been shuttered, hundreds of thousands of retail employees have been furloughed, and companies are losing uh, most of their sales. This could spell bad news for other struggling brands like Sears, JCPenney, and Neiman Marcus. Meanwhile, the aviation and aerospace industries continue to struggle. GE Aviation announced plans to accelerate uh, the cost cutting by permanently shrinking its global workforce by as much as 25% this year. Mm. That includes cutting as many as 13,000 jobs in its jet engine business. United Airlines has encouraged employees to consider 
quote, voluntary separation, unquote, from the airline as it looks to cut costs and jobs. Uh, one thing that I heard during Governor Newsom's address, of, uh, I think a few days ago, was the fact that, you know, uh, for contact tracing, right, you're going to need a huge, massive workforce, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what they're trying to do is they're also offering United Airlines, they're going to train United Airlines employees, the people who are the tele operators, mm -hmm. um, in um, uh, the COVID response. Um, and they're in turn going to be offered uh, opportunities to work with um, the California government to uh, be able to see how they can uh, also be supported through a different form of income. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so I, th I think that's uh, incredible that uh, you have to think outside the box at this point as to I where. Agree, yeah. And also Amazon and Amazon vice president says he cut ties with the company over the recent firing of employees who raised concerns about protections for warehouse workers during the pandemic. Uh, Tim Bray's last day was Friday and he just wrote a lengthy blog post discussing this decision. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, several Amazon workers have been protesting. Um, Amazon and Walmart workers have been protesting uh, saying that they have uh, not been given adequate personal protective equipment wow. um, and their um, you know uh, safety and security is at risk so there are many health and safety concerns over there so they have um, been doing that and of course Amazon has been a go-to service for people weathering lockdowns but it's also been extremely controversial um, they fired several warehouse workers who were vocal about the company's response to the coronavirus as well as two corporate employees who had organized around warehouse worker conditions so um, you can get more information about that on um, mediamahima.com and this I know is going to make Altu Baba very very happy baby Yoda ah. yeah is going to have his own Monopoly set. That's right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Hasbro is rolling out a Baby Yoda Monopoly set. And this is a, is this a Star Wars thing? <sighs> well, it is a Star Wars thing, but I'm, so, I'm not excited about it. Why, man? What's a Mon I don't like Monopoly. Uh, okay, I love Monopoly. That's Why a great. I always win in Monopoly. Did you know actually the government is against Monopoly? Yeah. Uh? No. That's a problem. You make it seem so common, so everybody out there who's a white collar will always think of cheating people. Of what not? But Monopoly is against the law, man. Oh, really? What? Uh, it's no, it's Monopoly the game, Altabama. It's still a game. So, oh, robbery huh. is a game. Huh. But again, it's against the law, right? Okay. Okay. Murder is a game, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. It is. Well, in India, let me tell you really quickly, total COVID-19 cases have crossed the 46,000 mark. As per the latest update by the Union Health Ministry, 1,500 people have died due to the virus across the country. And India has sent three ships to evacuate citizens from the Maldives and the UAE. The lockdown in India, as I mentioned yesterday, has been extended to May 17th. But uh, what they're saying is the good thing is that there is no more community spread. They have really begin to, begun to contain it um, and they're saying that get used to the new normal yeah. of, of physical distancing. I read about the particular new uh, liquor store opening up because of the new normal. Yeah. They made four crores in one day. Yeah. <laughs> and in Bombay they're saying that no essential stores are going to remain shut. Um, and also, let's tell you from Pakistan, uh, the coronavirus death toll has crossed 500 in Pakistan. Uh, Prime Minister Modi has shared a meeting of a task force on the coronavirus vaccine development. Um, how is that coming along? We'll share with you tomorrow right here on Good Morning Bay. That's all we have for you on this morning's uh, edition of uh, Good Morning Bay Punjab. We'll be back tonight live at 5 on the Pam Pam Show. And also, if you want to get more information about how to build immunity for COVID, COVID-19, all you need to do is go to the COVID resource page, bit.ly forward slash COVID resource page by Dr. Sina. It's a free ebook. Download it and build your immunity. We'll talk to you tonight at 5. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh.